Hi, this is Dr. Rachel Coleman with Being Health. Sit back, relax, and enjoy today's health and wellness topics. So, all of them have been good. All of the uh, dimensions of wellness have been fantastic. Um, but I'm going to say we saved the best for last. And I think, personally, I'm a little biased, spiritual wellness. Spir spiritual wellness. You know, so um, if, you're, if you're not already connected, you need to get connected, okay? But um, coming up now is uh, Minister Felice Hill. She's going to share with us uh, spiritual wellness. Minister Felice Hill is the International Leadership Director of the New Life Temple Bible College and Leadership Institute. She serves on the Board of Directors and provides the college's vision, protocol, and directives. She also holds a master's degree Master's of Science degree in theology from the New Life Temple Bible College and a Bachelor's in Science from the University of Cincinnati. Her greatest passion is to develop men and women who desire to experience God's ongoing leadership development. Her hobbies include celebrating and enjoying her family and preparing delicious holiday meals. She is the proud mother of four children, two daughter-in-laws, and six grandchildren. Please help me welcome yeah. Minister Felice Hill. Hi there. My name is Felice Hill, and I am a minister at New Life Temple Church, and I'm also the director, the international director of the New Life Temple Bible College. And today we are coming to you to speak about the topic, spiritual wellness. Now you may have jobs or special projects or hobbies where you set goals and check your progress. Now you may have gone to the doctor and had health checks and the doctor might recommend for you to go on a diet or exercise more. And that's the same way it is with your spiritual life we need to have health checks on our spiritual wellness. We need to check ourselves to see how we're progressing spiritually. In, second, in 3 John verse 2, the Apostle John says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. God wants us to be not only healthy in our body, but in our spirit also. Your spiritual wellness is the first and foremost important goal that you should have in your life. I want you to ask yourself this question. Am I growing spiritually or am I dying spiritually? Or maybe I'm just stuck at a standstill. If you are not where you are or where you should be, then you might want to increase your spiritual wellness. Now, I'm going to discuss with you three ways in which you can increase your spiritual wellness. The first thing that you want to do is to be like Jesus and take your spiritual vitamins. Your spiritual vitamins could be found in your spiritual food. And your food is the word of God that gives you all the nutrients that you need for a healthy life. The word of God will produce love, kindness, compassion, humility, and holiness, which are all essential to your spiritual wellness. The Bible says that you can tell people by what food they're eating and what fruit they bear. If you're feasting off the word of God, you will definitely grow fruits of righteousness, joy, peace, and love in the Holy Spirit. Now, the second way you can increase your spiritual health is to renew your mind. The Bible says for us not to be conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewal of our mind so that we can discern what is good and acceptable and perfect to God. Now, how do you renew your mind? Well, it's, it's very simple. In Philippians 4 and 8, it says to think on those things that are true, noble, 
whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, praiseworthy, think about such things. Now, what are things that are excellent and praiseworthy? Well, if you go to your Bible to Psalms 107, it tells you that God is good and his mercy endures forever. Now, that's something to praise God about. Can you count how many times that God has been good to you? Can you count how many times he has been merciful to you? It says that he delivers us from distress and he directs our path. God can make the crooked road straight. He has wonderful works. He's always looking after us, working things out for our good. He heals our bodies from sickness and diseases. I have my personal testimony on how God healed me from third stage cancer and from heart disease. God is a wonderful God. He satisfies our soul. Even if you're feeling sad just or depressed, just meditate on Psalms 107 to renew your mind. Another way to renew your mind is found in Ephesians 5 and 19. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Do you have a favorite worship song that just brings you into the presence of God? My worship song is Psalms 121. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from which cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. All of my help, all of my help comes from the Lord. It just takes me straight into the throne room. When you renew your mind and think about the goodness of Jesus and his wonderful works, the sadness and the weariness lifts and the spiritual healing begins. The third way to check your spiritual wellness is by analyzing your hunger and your thirst for God. God initiates a spiritual thirst and hunger in all of us. The Bible says that those who thirst and hunger after righteousness will be filled. Look at the birds. He gives the birds food. He feeds them. Aren't you more valuable than the birds? The Bible says his eye is on the sparrow, so we know he watches over us. How do you hunger and thirst for righteousness? Well, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me, he will never hunger and he will never thirst. It's just that simple. It's based on your willingness to come to Jesus and believe him. The most significant wellness you will ever have is your relationship with Jesus Christ. Believing that he is the son of God is the only way to salvation. Receiving him by faith as your Lord and Savior is the most vital and essential and important thing that you will ever do. Would you like to invite Jesus in your life? Or maybe your spiritual wellness is not where it should be and you need a fresh anointing and refilling of the Holy Spirit. If God is speaking to your heart, Join me in prayer. Repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for giving me life. And I ask you to forgive me for all of my shortcomings and sins. Dear Heavenly Father, create in me a clean spirit. Create in me a clean heart. Lord, fix it within all of my guilt and sins. Lord, restore to me the joy of my salvation so I can worship you and sing your praise. Lord, I ask you, Father, to renew my mind by the word of God and that I will eat my vitamins, Father, so that I can grow in grace and that I can grow in my spiritual wellness, Father. 
I thank you, Father, for your fresh anointing, Father, of your Holy Spirit to fill my heart and my soul and my life. I thank you, Lord, for all these things, and I am ready to come to you and be obedient to you and to walk in spiritual wellness. I want to thank all of our viewers for joining in with us today at Be In Health, and may you have abundant blessings. Thank you. All right, so I think it's a good place to talk about uh, CPR. We have an excellent person to do it. Um, I, I think everybody needs to know CPR. Did I mention? I think everybody <laughs> needs to know CPR. That means you. Sometimes we wait for the next person to know well, what about you? What if you are left in a situation where you're the only person there to help a family member, and guess what? You call emergency services and they put you on hold. I have been put on hold. We won't tell the county, but I have been put on hold while serving in a medical office, not once, but twice, when there was a medical emergency. Thankfully, I know what to do. Will you? Set the thing about, okay. All right, so presenting CPR is certified nurse practitioner Charlene Hines. She is a native of Cincinnati and the founder and CEO of Hines Primary Care, which was established in 2022. Becoming a nurse practitioner has always been one of her goals. She was inspired by watching her mother who worked as a nursing assistant. Over the years, she has worked as a certified nurse assistant, licensed practical nurse, registered nurse, and now as a certified nurse practitioner. Some of the positions she has held include being a, an assistant director of nursing, school nurse, case manager in home health, unit manager, nurse on medical surgical and rehab units, and adolescent psychiatric nurse. In her spare time, she enjoys traveling to different states, taking cruises, and watching football and basketball. Oh, yeah. Would you please welcome certified nurse practitioner Charlene Hines. CPR, the most important part is the compressions. You have compressions and breath. The compressions help the um, blood pump, pump, pump back into the organs. Um, is anybody in here certified in CPR? Up to date.
some people don't know CPR, and then the rest of them is afraid. I mean, you're, or they're afraid of the doing it. Um, another myth is that you can hurt somebody when you're doing CPR, and you can become injured. The person that you're giving CPR to can become injured, but um, as far as like they get some broken ribs, but the injuries is minor compared to death. Oh, okay. Another myth is people can get sued for doing um, CPR, which all states have good Samaritan acts of people who, um, to protect people who try to save people's lives. So when you are CPR certified or not, I mean, you can just like look up your state because every state is different. So whatever state you, you're in, I would make sure you be familiar with the good Samaritan laws. And then another myth is um, with CPR, as far as like the, the AED, it's an um, automatic external defibrillator, and it's used for um, to shock your heart back into a like electrical charge to try to shock your heart back into um, the regular rhythm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it doesn't work, but it says nobody can use it but healthcare professionals, and that's not true because it gives you the pro all you got to do is turn it on and it prompts you to. Know what, what you're supposed to do. There's pictures on the pads where you're supposed to place them, so you just place them in the right areas and then, you know, right. just do what they say. Um, a difference on the um, AED is if a person has a pacemaker, you can't put the pad over top the pacemaker, you put it up under it. And like if they're too hairy, there should be a razor in there that um, you can shave the hair because sometimes it won't work if the person is too hairy or if they're wet or on a medicine patch, you can't put it on a medicine patch, you have to take it off. Um, so, but I mean, in a nutshell, that you know, CPR is very, it's very important. It's, because anybody can use it, not just healthcare professionals. People have grandkids that do stuff that, you know, anything can happen to, can happen to them. Um, at this point, it's like certain professionals, like lifeguards, as a pool, nurses, doctors, hospital workers, even the dietary, uh, police, firefighters that have to have, um, be certified in CPR. So. That's exactly what I have to say. Thank you. All right. All right. Yeah, in case you're wondering, you know, what, what are we doing out here in the woods? This is, this is actually therapeutic, okay? Okay, so there are benefits of green spaces. Uh, green spaces, I know you're not supposed to read the slides, but I'm gonna read the slides. Y'all be patient with me, okay? Uh, green spaces actually improve your physical and mental health, okay? Uh, physical health is improved by encouraging active lifestyles like walking, running, and other exercise, which can lead to lowering um, your, your odds of obesity or being overweight, improves your heart health, lowers your risk for diabetes, lowers your risk for cholesterol, lowers your risk for blood pressure, and a longer life, especially after that buffet table, right? <laughs> All right, so, and your mental health is improved because it, it lowers stress. Just looking out the window yes. can help to lower your stress. How many need a stress reliever? Look out the window sometime, okay? Yeah. All right, it can reduce your anxiety, lessen your depression, ease your mood, lower your rates of substance abuse, and of course there's an epidemic right now with the substance use disorders. We're gonna talk about that later. It can improve your concentration and focus, uh, increase your feelings of calm, and recharge you emotionally. Rest, okay, the noun. Repose or sleep is specifically a bodily state characterized by minimal functional and metabolic activities, uh, freedom from activity or labor, a state of motionless or inactivity, the repose of death, a place for resting or lodging, peace of mind or spirit. So these are just a, a few definitions on what you to kind of think about what does rest mean to you. I'm not going to interject my thoughts on that, but what does rest mean to you? And, and this is help to 
uh, inspire some thought. <coughs> Recreation, refreshment of strength and spirit after work. Also a means of refreshment or diversion, hobbies. How many of us have hobbies? How many of us need to have hobbies? <laughs> so it, 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 it can help to refresh you. The synonym, fun, relaxation, frolic, fun and games, play sports. So that's our objective today, is to recreate, okay, and hopefully uh, help to hit the reset button and recharge you. All right, sleep. Are we getting enough sleep? No. <laughs> Why? Are you working too much? Do you need to simplify your life? Sleep is very important. You have to be, or perhaps need to be, very intentional about sleep. Just don't do it right now, okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right, according to Miriam Webster, sleep is a natural, easy, easily reversible periodic state of, of many living things that is marked by the absence of wakefulness, wakefulness and by the loss of consciousness of one's surroundings. It is accompanied by a typical body posture such as lying down with the eyes closed the occurrence of dreaming and changes in brain activity and physiological functioning is made up of cycles of non-REM sleep and REM sleep and is usually considered essential to the restoration and recovery of vital bodily and mental functions. I'm going to say that last part again. And is usually considered essential to the restoration and recovery of vital bodily and mental functions. So if you want one, to, to stay young, this could be your anti-aging program, okay? Get enough sleep, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, later. Okay, so health benefits of sleep. Get sick less often, Stay at a healthy weight, believe it or not. Lower your risk for serious health problems like diabetes and heart disease, which we'll talk about later. Reduce stress and improve your mood. Reduce stress and improve your mood. You might not think you need an improved mood, but your family might think so. Think more clearly and do better in school and work. Get along better with people. Make good decisions and avoid injuries. For example, drowsy drivers. We don't want drowsy drivers. Don't be one of them, right? Uh, but drowsy drivers uh, uh, cause thousands of car accidents every year. Yes. And uh, your life is very important and the life of others too. Okay, retreat. This is what we're doing right now, right? Yes. A place of privacy or safety, roughly. This is one of the definitions. A period of group withdrawal for prayer, meditation, study, or instruction under a director. Okay, so we had a little instruction, but hopefully we're having a lot of fun with it. How you doing today? Anthony Jordan of Invito Personal Chef. We're gonna go over to the stove. We wanna get it warm, and we're using a, we wanna coat it with extra virgin olive oil. Slightly, nothing huge, nothing major. Kind of coat it, let it get warm, and let that release in the pan. And what we're gonna saute in the pan is a California medley piece of salmon, seasoned salmon. Put that here. And again, we're after quick and efficiency. We're gonna let that get up to speed. Low heat, Me low to medium heat. Because we don't wanna burn it, we don't want all the, the flavors and everything to pop out the pan. We don't wanna mess, we don't wanna fire. We just wanna eat. 
The vegetable on the stick, right next to it. Both can cook at the same time. Again, for me, coming out of the gym, this is it. This is the hit. Vegetables with season with a Goya seasoning, sans all. That's the reason you see the orange in here. Very flavorful seasoning. Um, every time I use it, people question me about what I made, what, what seasoning was on it. Uh, no salt, no sodium, no high blood pressure. And you just want to let that um, just let it cook. I have students that I train and we'll all give them a bag. And everything is the same in the same bag. But the presentation on the plate can determine whether it's sold for $5 or $15. It's the same ingredients. It's just how it looks on the plate. Salmon, usually I let it cook until that skin gets crispy. I go skin down first, because the heat's gonna run the flavor up top to the thick part of the meat. After that, when you flip it, it's gonna settle in the middle. And then try to do something different. I play with liquid nitrogen sometimes. So, <laughs> so I uh, I try to try to move. Try to that's the thing about being a personal chef. You are the business and you get a chance to do things that you wouldn't normally get a chance to do if you was working corporately for somebody else or privately for somebody else. You know, it, it, when, a, when a client calls, a customer call, a friend or whatever, we kind of just go through the motions. We kind of bounce back and forth off each other as a personal chef. If you go to, to a restaurant, you got to get what's on the menu. You can make a few variations here and there. Sometime now I'm noticing even at the high end restaurant, they won't let you make adjustments. It's like, you get what we serving and that's it. If you want something extra, what we can charge you, yeah, but an adjustment, no. So while we got that cooking here, we're just gonna go ahead and do what they do on the other shows. <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and pull it out. We're already done. And I have some mango as a garnish and again so this is right here you got your vegetables you got proteins and then you got a fruit that's the finished product i know you want more but that's all for now and until next time be in health